Hello. So what we're going to talk about today is what we call higher order derivatives. So up until now, we've only been taking one derivative for each function. We've just been finding f prime of x. But when we take the derivative of a function, we just get another function. So it's not a bad question to ask yourself, can I keep taking the derivative? Could I take the derivative of my derivative and what would that give me? What would I call it? And we can, since it's just another function, we're just going to continue applying that derivative process to get more and more derivatives. And we call these our higher order derivatives because they're not the first derivative anymore. So we have some different um, types of derivatives we're going to talk about today. So if we start with a function f of x, we have our first derivative, which we can call f prime of x. Or we could write it as something like d dx or dy dx. We'll make it dy dx just because a lot of books use that. So now if I take the derivative of my first derivative, I get the second derivative, which we write as f double prime of x. Or we could write it as d squared y over dx squared. So two, these are just, this is just a slide going over the different notations. But normally we use f prime of x, f double prime of x. You might see y prime or y double prime, anything like that is okay. So then if we take the derivative of the second derivative, it makes sense that we should get what we call the third derivative. So f triple prime of x, or we would have d cubed y over dx cubed or y uh, triple prime. And we can keep going, and we can take the fourth derivative. But when we get to fourth derivative or higher derivatives, we don't just do a bunch of prime symbols because that takes up a lot of room and it doesn't really look real nice. We just put in parentheses the power of the derivative that it is. So f with parentheses 4 is the fourth derivative of x. Or we could do d4y over dx to the fourth, or y to the fourth, which we can then generalize to saying the nth derivative of x can be written as f with the n in parentheses of x, dny over dx to the n, comma y to the n. So sometimes it's really helpful for us to know okay, well, the first derivative of my function is f prime of x, but if I take the derivative of that, I can, s the derivative of the first derivative, in other words, the second derivative, would tell me how the first derivative is changing. So the derivative of any function just tells you about the rate of change of the previous function. So the first derivative of tells us about the rate of change of f of x, so it tells us how f of x is changing at any given point. So the second derivative just tells us how the first derivative is changing at any given point. And that keeps going on down to the third, fourth, fifth, whatever type of derivative you have. So the third derivative just tells you how the second derivative changes at any given point. But normally we're just going to worry about the first and the second derivative. We don't really work with third or higher derivatives too often. So now let's actually go about finding some second derivatives. So here we want to evaluate the second derivative of tangent of x is. So now, in the last video, we learned that the derivative of tangent, the first derivative of tangent, was secant squared of x. So now we're going to go about finding the second derivative of this. Oops, sorry, I just realized I wrote that a little wrong. First derivative of tangent isn't... Tangent should go in there. That equals secant squared of x. Which, for our purposes, we're going to write as secant of x times secant of x. And in the last video, we also learned that the derivative of the secant of x was secant of x times tangent of x. So now, in order to evaluate our second derivative of tangent of x, which is what the problem is asking us for, that's really just going to be the derivative of secant of x times the secant of x, which 
now we have the product of two things, which means that we're going to bring our power rule into play. So again, let's just write our, not our power rule, rather our product rule. I always say that wrong because of the two Ps. So just as a quick reminder, the derivative of f times g is g times the derivative of f plus f times the derivative of g. So when we're doing this, we're going to let this first secant be f, the second one be g. And since we already found what the derivative of secant was last time, and we wrote it on the screen again for you, we're just going to plug into our formula now and see what happens. Okay, so this means that the derivative of secant of x times secant of x is going to be equal to g times f prime. So this being g, we're going to have secant of x times the derivative of secant of x, which is going to be secant x tan x, plus f times g prime, that's going to be secant of x times the derivative of secant, so secant x tangent of x. So in other words, that's going to be secant squared x times tangent of x plus secant squared of x tangent of x. Or we can simplify that to be just 2, secant squared of x tangent squared of x. So this means that the second derivative of the tangent function is 2 times secant squared x tangent of x. So whenever you ask for a higher order derivative of a function, you just start going down the process. You take the first derivative and the second derivative. If you were to need to find the third derivative, you would just take the derivative again. You just keep taking derivatives until you're done the problem, basically. Okay, so let's try another example. Well, before we try another example, why do we need more than one derivative? Why do we care about the second or third derivative? Well, What's really nice is that what we learned before was the first derivative can be considered the velocity function of a position function. So if we start with a position function that describes the position of some object or particle, whatever, if that's s of t, we learned previously that the velocity of that function or that particle is just found by taking the derivative of the position function. So we can find the velocity or how fast something is moving at any given point by taking the derivative and plugging in. Well, now, we, if we take the derivative of the velocity function, so v prime of t, that's going to give us the acceleration function of this, this object because if we look at the derivative of velocity, that's looking at how the velocity function is changing at any given point. Well, the way your velocity is changing, we describe as acceleration. So the way that these things are described is that the acceleration function of t, that's equal to v prime of t, just like it's written before. But v prime of t was just the derivative of the first derivative of s. So this is just the second derivative of your position function. So that's why we like having more than one derivative. As we keep going down in derivatives, they tell us different things about a position function, anything sort of like that. So the second derivative is really nice because it tells you how this object is accelerating at any given point or how the rate of change is changing at any given point. So let's apply that to an example problem. So this example probably looks really familiar. It's the same one that we used when we were talking about the relationship between position and velocity functions previously. So at time zero, a diver is jumping off a platform that's 32 feet above the water of the pool. So the position of the diver at any given time is given by s of t equals negative 16 t squared plus 16 t plus 32. And before, we were asking for what the diver's velocity was at time equaling two seconds. But now we want to know, how is he accelerating? So that's really easy, because all we have to do is take our derivatives now. So 
what we really want to know is what s double prime of 2 is. That's what our final answer is going to be. But in order to get there, we have to find the second derivative of s of t. So first, we're going to find the first derivative of s of t, which we know is just our velocity function. So applying our power rule of differentiation, we're going to get negative 16 times 2, so negative 32t, dropping that exponent down 1, plus 16, plus 0. Okay, so now if I want to know our second derivative of the position function, or as double prime of t, that's really just the derivative of the velocity function, or v prime, which we now know we can call the acceleration function, or a of t. So if we take the derivative of this thing here now, the derivative of negative 32t is just negative 32 plus 0 plus 0. Okay, so that means our final answer, our acceleration at 2, is just s double prime of 2, which is equal to the derivative of v at 2, or the acceleration function evaluated at 2, which is just going to be negative 32. And now we need to add our units on, because this, the answer of negative 32 doesn't make sense without units, since we're talking about something in real life. So we knew that the velocity, well, starting back up in the s of t, s of t is measured in feet. So when we found the velocity function before, we said that the units were feet per second. So now for the acceleration function, it's just going to be feet per second squared. So at time equaling 2, so 2 seconds after the diver jumps off this diving board, he's accelerating at negative 32 feet per second squared. And that's how you go about doing an application problem using the second derivative. So thank you so much for watching. I hope today um, helped you figure out what a higher order derivative was and maybe how to go about finding it or using it in an application problem. Have a great rest of your day.